Hi, welcome to Qtile again. Qtile's configuration can be found in the Qtile in here in the scripts and the config pie. So these two guys are the important things. That's just wallpaper and icons. So the one that we've just seen and explained already is auto start. And the second I would like to explain is the config.py, which is a Python thing. So you open it whatever um, editor you'd like and change it if you don't like it. So open with another application, just say use as default for this kind of file and then you'll remember it. So I'm double clicking here and it's going to be opened with Atom. Atom gives me a nice look in coding and coloring. And that's why we use um, these, these um, editors so that when you type, mistype anything, the color will already give you a hint that you forgot to close it with brackets or a comma here or there, or even a space. It really does matter in some of these desktops that a space can, well, break your system. So we have here a code, a long code. I'm not going into detail, but I'm going for an overview of this code. So maybe the first thing first, Control F, auto start. We started with auto start, but basically auto start is at line 525. And it's important to know that it starts just once. Start once and then start this process. Everything that's in the auto start is just started at log login actually, right? So a super shift R or reload of Qtile is not going to be affecting this file. So it says once. So if you change something in the auto start.sh, you need to actually log out, log in, and then you'll see that this file is being reloaded, restarted, because it's defined in here. So that's one thing. That's the start up, right? Now we scroll all the way up. And then we get the configuration of Qtile itself, loading up libraries, elements from libraries in order for us to, to use it. Now, what's important is, is keyboards. Since it's a tiling window manager, we need to define, hey, this is that and this is that. So our variable is the mod variable is mod4, which is our super key. Mod1 is alt, mod2 is control and the home, well, is a variable and it's going to find out where our home is. So in my case, home Eric. So a lot of things. So going for an overview means that you have here keys, lots of keys of them. So a super E is going to launch Atom, a super F, which is a cool one, is going to full screen so you can work and forget all about the rest. But then of course your menu is gone and all that and say it's broken, it's not broken just press super F again and it's back the way it was. So all of these applications can be changed, managed. Um, and also an interesting one is, is super escape. So kill an application if something is really bugging you and it's, it's taking a while to, to shut down and say, no, nope, I wanted to shut down right now. And then super escape is the way to go. A super return is a thing we use all the time and a super queue is something as well we use all the time. So that's actually a new one. It used to be super shift queue, so super queue will work as well. So these are the sum, the, the super function keys, okay? Super F1, F2, F3. If you want to change anything here, this is the way to do it. Then there's a combination of keys, super shift return. Super shift return is going to do this and you just change the way you like it. Uh, these are some colors. Maybe you'd like to change the colors as well. It's all possible. Control Alt keys. So Control Alt A is XFC for App Finder, Thunar, Control Alt B, etc., etc., etc. I see actually we could type this one as with a small C, but I suppose it does not really matter. Or does it control alt C? It might matter because it's not running anything. So let's try that again with a C. Yep, so we definitely need to have a smaller C and not a capital C. So what did I experiment here? I typed a small C, so I'm gonna back, I'm gonna make the mistake back. 
Control save is when you save things. Super shift R is when you reload things. But you know Linux, if you do a, a control alt C, that's this one, nothing really happens because it's capital C. So control alt shift capital C is not doing anything either. So basically we need to update our system here. So super shift R, control alt C and catfish is there. So we discover some typos as well. So all these elements are in here. There's also a Compton configuration, a script that we run. So we need to go into detail in another video about Compton anyway. And there is the alt and the key. So the variety elements are in here. Alt, alt F2, alt F3 as well. And there is the pywall script that we're using. So there's a pywall script ready for you to use. The question is, um, well, do you like it or not? It's up to you to decide to use it or not. It's great for screenshots, for instance. If you press on super shift and then return, sorry, and super return is enough. What happens if you use mod shift F? It's going to colorful colorful uh, give a colorful terminal here and you can add uh, C matrix and all that and bash pipes and things like that so depending on the wallpaper so alt shift and then next one it will follow the coloring of your wallpaper so every time there's a new wallpaper there is also a new look in your terminal that's the pie wall so that's that so all kinds of keyboard shortcuts. Then what do we have? We have some decrease and brightness and the volume and all that. So depending on what system you're working on, if you have MPC here as a server, a sound server, or just a general player CTL, so Spotify and stuff like that, Paraga, work with these things, but if you want to have NCM PCP, then you need to say, I want to have this one. So just delete hashtag and delete the others at the top. So that works as well. Qtile layout keys, mod N, mod space, normalize and space. We've done that in another video. Change some focus, not really working with those. I just click on my my windows so changing focus just move around from one to the other uh, rather than having these buttons but it works resizing not using them either but we should definitely try out in another video just going for the overview here flip layout for bsp so mod 1 keln we can change elements shuffle up the group names for QWERTY keyboards, group names 1, 2, 3, 4, till 10. So this one is number 10. And we get some labels with it. These labels look ugly, but they're not that ugly. They're these guys. So it's the awesome font that's not displayed in here. It's taken from the awesome um, cheat sheet. Google that and you'll find all the icons. And we copy paste them in here and it looks like this. So all that's in here, the margins maybe, lay out the theme, so the margins, the border, the width, the colors, when it's focused, the colors, when it's normal, and some initialing colors here. But let's see, where are we? We're almost at the end. So we can change here the widgets, so the widgets list, what will you have up here? So the group box font awesome, that's what we're gonna use. And which is it's a separator. So it's a line that we have here. The current layout is a monad tall, a separator again, the windows name is here. Then we get the text box for the CPU graph. So we're already here and it goes on and goes on like this. There's also something for the batteries, it's still hashtagged out because of the fact that this is desktop but you can check out every element here from the clock and the separator the sys tray stuff so this is the sys tray icons 
everything can be changed in here and we're almost at the button which gives us back again the auto start we started with and the cursor so that's always a nice cursor everywhere which is basically our uh, snow cursor the white one some rules about floating if you want to have something uh, pop up confirm dialog download pop-ups like these then we have set them to floating so they're not tiled we will look out the same here and we're at the bottom so that's basically your Python setup this is what you should do it with and um, we can go into separate well tutorials for for changing themes and all that later on all right have fun